Uh, it seems, uh, turning to the ransomware, it seems like both you and, and FBI Dir- Director Christopher Ray are of the opinion that you shouldn't ever pay the ransom for ransomware. Uh, and public opinion on this does appear to be moving in the direction, this direction for a number of reasons, not least of which is that money goes to fund criminal activities. Uh, I think that some companies are eager to throw money at the problem just to make it go away quickly and, and not disrupt operations. So um, to that end, can you talk about some security recommendations that you have so that when your company does get hit with ransomware, you're in a p- better position? and able to resume operations without paying the ransom? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll I'll start with the caveat of sometimes paying the ransom is the only thing a company can do. So yes. I won't say never pay the ransom. Right, yes. We had a, what, my, my, my previous guest was saying, yeah, when, when lives are at stake, a hospital or things like that, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. And ransom, sometimes, yeah. you know, just a company just wasn't ready for it and they mm-hmm. got hammered. And mm-hmm. they they really have no other way to get out than to pay, yep. and you know that's that's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, what 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 I recommend and and what what Redacted recommends is that people try to pay the ransom as an absolute last resort. Okay, they do everything else first, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so that includes having um, really good backups that are mm-hmm. that are kept offline. There's no way for the actors to get to those to corrupt those backups. Mm-hmm. Um, so that you'll be able to restore business operations, you know, as quickly as possible without having to pay the ransom. One of the things that makes that more complicated now is that they are is that almost every one of the the ransomware actors are doing what's called a double extortion scheme. Yeah, yeah. Where they are exfiltrating a bunch of valuable data first. And then they threaten to leak that data on the internet or they mm-hmm. threaten to sell it to your competitors unless yep. you pay, right. right? And no amount of backups is gonna save you from that. Yeah. So the, the security recommendations that, that we have to go along with this threat is really about protecting the crown jewels of your company um, as, as, as securely as you can in such a way that even if they do steal a bunch of valuable information, it's not going to be the stuff that's going to cripple you. It's not going to be the stuff Mm -hmm. that destroys your company. It's not going to be the stuff that is going to make your competitor suddenly have an edge over you. Mm -hmm. So when, whenever we do a security assessment, one of the very first things we do is we help a company identify what are your real crown jewels and how can we secure those in such a way that even if an actor does get into your network, getting to those crown jewels is going to be so hard and so time consuming that they may never get to them, Mm -hmm. right? And then that that reduces the value of what is stolen and it reduces the impact of what is leaked. And so if a company does this the right way, the, the ransomware actor can threaten to leak the information that they stole and the company can just make an educated, you know, risk risk decision to say, fine, leak it. You know, mm-hmm. we don't yeah. care. We're not going to pay you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You've got nothing. <laughs> you got yeah. no cards in your hand. Um, so uh, can you sort of talk about, I mean, I, I think those are, those are great policy recommendations. Uh, can you talk about uh, like the logistics or the the financial cost of sort of changing your security around that? Cause I mean, that sounds so sort of lucid and logical that, you know, obviously if, if it were, uh, you know, easy to do, like everyone would have done it by now. So like, what, yeah. what, what is the sort of, what, what are the steps to get your company towards that? I mean, I'm, I imagine the first part is letting your board know the sort of severity of the possibilities and, and get them to take action. But like, how do you, how do you move towards something like that? Yeah. Go, going from, you know, whatever your current state is to being like, as secure as humanly possible Mm -hmm. is is a journey. It's not something that will happen overnight and it's not something that will happen without cost, right? And so um, what really the best way to go about that is to to do it in pieces and be constantly improving things. Okay. um, Doing it in such a way that you are, you know, the the members of the board or the members of the C-suite are giving their security team enough funds so that they can be constantly making these improvements. I'm excited to announce that our InfoSec Skills platform will be releasing a new challenge every month with three hands-on labs to put your cyber skills to the test. Each month, you'll build new skills ranging from secure coding to penetration testing to advanced persistent threats and everything in between. Plus, we're giving away more than $1,000 worth of prizes each month. Go to infosecinstitute.com challenge and start your challenge right now.